Uh, Guy Harris uh, is my guest today uh, in Yorkshire and UK, and uh, just a little little backstory here. You sent a very nice email not long ago, and I went over to your website, and uh, I was just blown away by certainly your level of talent, the amazing credits uh, that you have, and but even more than that, just the amount of work that you're doing. I thought this is somebody that I need to get to know better. That the people who you know who watch this YouTube channel uh, get to, need to get to know a little bit better. So. So, uh, so now, Guy, tell I mean, tell us a little bit about what brought you to. Um, obviously, I want I want to get into the the business end of things um, because really, my my motivation, my agenda as a voiceover coach and trainer is to is to equip and to educate and empower uh, people to be able to develop profitable voiceover careers. But what brought you to voiceovers? What's your background? Um, my background is um, I was a radio presenter. Well, I still am I still do a little bit of radio just one show a week um what do you call you call them a radio announcers over there don't you yes, so yes. I was a radio announcer yeah so as a kid I always used to do impressions I think my very first impression was of my doctor and my doctor had a very sort of scratchy voice like this and I used to come out of the <laughs> surgery and my mum would tell me off because I was doing it as we left the actual surgery so I kind of developed you know to be able to do characters and invent my own characters and impersonations and stuff and um then I got into I fell into radio I'm now in my 19th year as a radio presenter as wow. well and um and then 10 or 12 years ago i thought people are ringing me all the while saying can you do this voice can you do that and i thought i should try and make some money out of this why not so i get myself yeah so i get myself on the internet and the next thing i know i'm being booked by people from all over the uk and then slowly from outside the uk and europe and here we are today and whilst there's a six hour time difference between you speaking now and me I'm on session 22 of a Thursday afternoon. I've still got two hours to go. So. That's what really caught my attention. Um, the fact that I think you said you're averaging about 22 or so projects per day, which I want to get to. We, we want to hear more, you know, more <laughs> about that. Guy, tell us a little bit about some. I mean, I've noticed uh, looking at your website that you've, you're have you a voice on the video game Worms, correct? Yes, that's right. I play all the characters. All the, well, the, the last two games, that's Ultimate Mayhem and Revolution. I play all the characters in there. So, yeah. Oh, yeah I did not realize good. that. So, you um, very versatile. Tell us about some of, the, some of the clients or projects that you've done that you're most excited about or proud of. Well, I, I mean, I'll tell you about Worms just very briefly. Sure. Worms was fantastic. Where I am in, in the UK, in Wakefield, there's um, quite a, a mecca for video games, uh, video game manufacturers and Rockstar. I know they've got a place in Leeds, which is not far from me, and Activision are based here. Well, it turned out that Team 17 behind Worms were five minutes from my house, and I, I never <laughs> realized. Really? So I dropped a CD in once, and about six months later, I get a call saying, hey, we've got some work. Do you fancy coming in? I go in, do a bunch of voices, and they like what I did, and I've been proud to work with them, really. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's how Worms came about, living next door to them. them by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, and some of the other uh, some of the other work that I've done as well, which is you know it's quite good. I got to play a little bit on um, Sleeping Dogs and Little Big Planet as well. I've been on that and uh, what other video games? Cracky. I do lots of games for apps as well, which is which I think is a new evolving market. More and more people are making apps. I think in the early stages of apps, apps would come out that were all very visual and very pretty, and people were. Um, uh, putting great apps together that you could interact with. But more and more people, I think now, app developers are saying, let's get some characters in here, let's get some voices. And yeah. um, we're, seeing, we're seeing more sort of inquiries, I think now, with, from app developers saying, can we get a character on here? I just need a sergeant major for this. I need an, uh, an impression of this. Uh, you know, I, I think that's a great market to get into, and it's one that seems to be getting a bit bigger for me as well, which is nice. The market in all directions seems to be exploding. I had a, one of my students called me earlier this week and said I was just hired to do, to do a voice for an app. And they said, I didn't even realize that apps required voices. I said, well, you know, it's all, it's all growing, expanding. As you said, it's not just visual anymore, uh, becoming more, you know, interactive and more audio. And do you do commercial work as well? Uh, the bulk of my work is radio and TV stuff over okay. here in the UK. Um, I would say... So if I look down of my checklist of the stuff I've done today, I've done four jobs in the Middle East, two in Spain, and the rest are a mixture of radio commercials, a TV commercial, and on hold, which is also quite a big market. I do, I do a little bit of that as well every day. 
Um, so yeah, it's a mixture of radio and TV. So it's been quite a nice, nice blend today. <laughs> Guy, I tell you, the fact that you're doing 20 plus projects per day is nothing short of astounding. <laughs> it was 20, 20, 28 last Thursday. <laughs> Wednesday, last Wednesday. You know, simply from a time management and a physical perspective, because that's, you know, a lot of people think it's easy. You know, you just kind of sit back and talk all day. But there is a, there's a certain amount of physicality that goes into being able to perform. Uh, especially, you know, that many projects in a day. I, I'm just, I'm dying to know. Talk to me about your, your <laughs> business plan, your, your marketing philosophy. How do you do what you do? Hey, Bill, I can't get too much away. I mean, well, huh? no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, I guess, uh, you know, you see, you see um, coaches like yourself and, and, and you give lots of fantastic tips and advice to people. And, uh, you know, I watch these things and say, uh, are not constantly saying, absolutely, this is common sense. People should understand this. And I think one, one of the secrets is just be a nice person as well. Mm. If you're a nice person, people will want to use you again. You hear so many horror stories of producers saying, I work with blah, blah, blah the other day. And, oh, God, he was moaning about this, that, and the other. And you think, as a producer, you've got a producer sat in a room. He's staring at a commercial script. It says, I need an, a male voiceover between 20 and 40. He's got to make a decision who to give that to. Now, is he going to give it to the person who he last worked with that was bitching and moaning? Or is he going to give it to the person that he gets on well with and has a good rapport with? Now, I'm not saying that's the be all and end all of getting a lot of work. I, I would say that 70% is marketing and selling and 30% is actual voice. You've got to get out there and market yourself. You know, and Guy, what you're saying really speaks to the idea of not just getting jobs, but developing, cultivating clients. I always yep. say that jobs can lead to clients and clients lead to careers. It's when you get repeat work and you've just hit on a huge thing and that's, and a lot of people, you're right, totally overlook that, getting to the nuts and bolts of business marketing, but s simple kindness, politeness, respect, uh, even things like, uh, from my experience, speaking from my experience, uh, people, you know, appreciating uh, being a, a person of your word, doing what you say you will do, delivering projects on time. Um, a, a lot of people totally overlook, in, what my, in my opinion, is some of the most, imp this most important ingredients of having a, a successful career. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on. I'd love to hear more. I, I think, no, you're hitting the nail on the head. Uh, I don't know whether that's a, an Americanism as well as an English one. Um, but it's relationship building. It's, it's all yeah. about building relationships with people. You know, I, I work with so many different producers a month and, and I know all about them. And over the years of working with them, you get to know that, oh, I'm working with John today. Oh, he went on a skiing trip last week. Let's talk about that. And, uh, and that's part of the relationship building. It's, it's uh, having friends in the industry. Mm. But then there's, then there's the social media aspect that I think is sometimes overlooked by people. Some people will tweet and social media for, um, you know, just for the hell of it, obviously, which yeah. is what it's designed for. But there are also ways of using it to your advantage. YouTube has been phenomenal for me. I just put a whole bunch of videos on YouTube, a few little demos and a few little yeah, viral videos. Is, attach your name to it and the particular genre that you're doing and you never know when someone's looking through the internet and they say i need a movie voice that they um they, the they, you know they stumble across my video they might just put in movie voice and uh, next thing you know you've got a booking out of it so uh -huh. i think social media and and all the you know soundcloud get your stuff on soundcloud get your um get your tags right on SoundCloud so that if people are searching, they will find you. And eventually you show up in Google's rankings as well. I'm giving too much away here, Bill. What am I doing? I'm crazy. <laughs> You've lost your I, mind. You're giving, the, you're giving the store away. That's it. But no, I think it is down to relationship building. And if, yeah. if you are a genuine, I mean, I don't, I don't try to be nice on a daily basis. I'm, I, I think Having come from a, a background where I, you know, I've worked in shops, I've, I've valeted cars, I've done video production, to now being able to roll out of bed, come downstairs, come into a, a beautiful studio and, and actually work and do this. Every day, I'm very grateful when either the phone rings for booking or I uh, press get mail on the computer and a job's waiting for me. I mean, even after this <laughs> session now, I've got three jobs lined up. So That is an amazing feeling, isn't it? 
Oh, completely. Uh, honestly, on a daily basis, I'm blown away. And when my girlfriend comes home from work, she's like bitching and moaning about work. And she's saying, how was your day? I'm going, I feel really guilty for saying, oh, well, I, I did something for um, national TV today. And I did this amazing <laughs> job for uh, McDonald's over in Dubai. And then, and then uh, I'm now the voice of this and now the voice of that. And Butlins, which is a huge entertainment company, they've booked me to do a whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's I don't know. I'm, I'm blown away on a daily basis. I mean, if you, if you can see me now, I've got a grin from ear to <laughs> <laughs> because like you, I watch your videos and I can see that you, you love the job and you should. You know, this, this is voiceovers. We should really just, just get into it and enjoy it and be thankful on a daily basis that we're not filling people's cars and we're not sweeping the streets. I mean, we're very lucky to be doing this. I know we have to have a talent, obviously. You know, we right. all have a talent. Right. But it's a competitive marketplace and the marketplace is getting more and more competitive. So you can't just rely on, well, the phone's not ringing today. You know, make it ring. Get out there and make it ring. You'd mentioned about just the fact that um, uh, you, you're grateful, your gratitude for, for, for having the work. And, and one of the things that the people t tend to, I find creative people get a little hung up and um, uptight about the business aspect, uh, afraid to talk to people, afraid to reach out and market. And I just wanted to just kind of reinforce what you said in that for me, at least I know some of the most uh, the most exciting uh, aspects and moments in my career has not been when I've recorded a project but when a client contacted me and said I want you to record a project yes. landing the client is in and of itself the work aside I think the greatest gratification and that only comes by doing what you're just leading into and that is the nuts and the bolts and without you don't have to give away the store but you know just generally speaking what are some of the things that you do to, to market yourself to prospective clients um, I, do you know what? One of the um, one of the things that I think some people miss on is updating, updating your website, updating mm. your your demo. This, I mean, I was mortified this morning. I was on a, a client session this morning with a with a big client, and the guy said, "Oh, we've got a particular voice on your show reel that we want you to uh, to do for us." And he played it back, and I realized it was a demo that was three years old. And I said to him, "My gosh, have I not sent you my current demo?" I felt <laughs> appalled that I hadn't done that. So I think you know, uh, even every six months if you've collected new audio and you think actually that was a great you know that was a great read get a copy from the producer stick it into your demo and get that back on your website because if your demo on your website is four years old five years old the chances are you're much better than some of the stuff that you did back then because mm. we all evolve and you know the way that um that voiceovers are going now they don't always want the um, hard seller, by now, you've got to get this from this, and here's the telephone number. A lot more stuff is very sort of spoken and natural. Right. And certainly I've, I've noticed my line of work, um, people come to me to say, we just want a very casual, the Apple iPhone ads that I did in Dubai, you know, is a very uh, casual read style, and I love doing that. But two or three years ago, my demo would never have reflected that. So to make sure that you're, you're getting the work, I think it's important to... To, to stay on top of your demos and be current and be fresh. There's times where I've, I've been on a Voices website and they've got a news feed. And the news feed, and you look and it says, the, the, the latest entry is 2010, I did a mm. car commercial. Right, and right. why not in your downtime, which is what I do when I'm not doing things, I just go back on the website and think, oh, actually yesterday I did this, so I'll, I'll put it in my news feed. In turn as well, that will also help with Google because your website is evolving. So right. I think that's important. And as far as going back to the relationships with your clients and your clients coming to you, a, a lot of sessions where it's an agency session where I'm, I'm here in my booth and the client is the other end with the writer and uh, producer, again, it's down to relationship building. If they remember the session, you know, we might have a laugh and a joke in the session. I might do a few silly voices. And they remember you and mm. hopefully... If it's good, if it was a good experience for them, I, I, if they come to me and they say we need, you know, we need another read and another read and another read, just do it. There's no harm in just keep on doing it. If the client's happy, they'll remember you and they'll come back. Guy, you, you mentioned about the importance of keeping your demo up to date. How much importance should a voiceover talent place on their demo? Or I think you refer to them as show reels as well in the yeah. UK. How important? How much importance do you place on that? Very. I mean. High, <laughs> high importance. It's every, every day I'll do so. Today I did a job earlier and I said to the producer, can you send me a copy of that? Because I think not every script is written brilliantly. We all know that. But sometimes you can really get a gem of a script and you think that really flows. That's really showcasing my voice to the max. They've really, they've looked at this script and they've gone, yeah, guy can bring this alive. So when I get a script like that, I, I do write to them and I say, can you send me a copy? 
I don't like to be a pain. <laughs> I don't like to be a pain in their ass and constantly be asking for audio. But just every now and again, sure. Would you mind if I have an MP3? Yeah, no problem. I'll send you one over later. And if you get it, I just put it in a folder titled 2013. And if someone writes to me and says, "Oh, I need a, I need a read like this," I'll go to my current stuff first and I'll send that out to a producer or to an agency. Demos really, really important. Don't just send the one that you did three or four years ago. And I think also make the demo, send it to someone else first, a friend or a colleague in the industry. Get them to have a look or a, get them to have a listen to it and get their honest critiques. They might say that one in the middle doesn't really do anything any good for you because mm. we we can be too close to it. You know, we yeah. can be yeah. we listen and we go, oh, I sound fantastic at that. Well, really, you know, maybe you sound okay, but this would make you sound better. So. Yeah. Guy, I think one of the, the biggest mistakes, or at least the, the, when I'm talking with, with uh, especially newer, newer talent that uh, they tend to make, is they think local as opposed to national or global. Because they'll make comments like, well, here where I live in X, you know, or blank, fill in the city, it's hard to find work. Um, and obviously you have to think broader than that. I'm curious, for, from your perspective, have you found it extremely, did you find it extremely difficult to go from being, uh, you know, a UK-based talent to really being a global talent now that you are? You know what? I've never, ever looked at this industry as local. Here I am in a, a small, sleepy town called Wakefield in Yorkshire, up north in England. <laughs> and I, I can't remember the last, last time I did anything in my area. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we're lucky that the world is our marketplace. It's a global marketplace. You know, with my, my demos on YouTube for my movie stuff that I do, I get DJs over in Australia say, can you do me this intro for, intro for my club? I get DJs from the Far East. I get, I even get people in America asking me to do a US movie trailer voice. And it's, and it's really nice to be able to do that. So I, I don't think you can ever look at this as I live in a particular area and I want to work around here. Google, I don't want to give too many credits to Google, but, you know, just get on Google and Google production companies in X country, X city, somewhere else in the world. You'll find something, especially yeah, English speaking production, English speaking radio stations, English speaking production companies. They're all over the world. And uh, we spent, you know, a, a few days Googling a few of them got a huge database of new production companies, wrote to them. We had quite a nice response back from people, and I'm working with some of them already that didn't know, you know, I was available. And, Guy, I mean, the truth is we couldn't do what we do on the scale that we do it uh, had this been, I mean, going back 15, maybe even 10 years ago, maybe five years ago, uh, because of Google, because of the Internet, because of technology, it's completely... It's leveled the playing field. It's broken down barriers. And what a great, it's a great time to do what we do uh, because really there are, there's nothing to hinder us except our own, uh, our own uh, talent to the level we're willing to develop it and I think our own ambition to the, will, to the extent that we're willing to market ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, it's an exciting I'm, time to do what we do. 10, well, 15 years. I mean, ISDN's been around for a, a little while now. Oh, but. Wow, yeah. I mean, I talk to some of the guys that I look up to in the industry here, and there's some fantastic, great, really rich UK voices, people like Stephen Lyons and uh, Phil Sayer and some guys over here, some great names that I could mention. And these guys were traveling to radio stations. They'd get in their car in the morning, travel 50, 60, 100 miles to a radio station, sit down, be presented with 20 scripts and drive home again. And that would be a good career, for, you know, a good day for them. But these days, yeah, I mean, I'm here now in just jogging pants and uh, just a t-shirt and this is me that this is how i was when i fell out of bed this morning um so <laughs> so yeah you're not on camera you wouldn't even, you even <laughs> had to have anything actually that's very true um so so yes it, it is exciting it is exciting times and there's more and more technology coming out as well we've got isdm will isdm last forever who knows at the moment there are far too many other businesses outside of voiceovers that use ISDM for the infrastructure to, to just be taken away like that. I know people are worried, um, but we've got things like Source Connect, and as broadband speeds start to get um, better and better, they are slowly catching up with not where I am quite. I still have to tether to my mobile phone to get high broadband. But uh, you've got Source Connect and then there's this sound streak, which I've downloaded. I've not had a go with it yet. I've not had anyone that's requested me to use it. But I do it's think... Sound it, Street? Sound Streak. Oh, Stra streak. Sounds I'm not familiar streak. with that. Oh, apparently it's a new technology. It's uh, I don't I because I'm not using it. I don't want to go into oh, how it sure, actually sure. works. But um, I, I'd like to explore it a little more at the moment because I think there's still a few people saying, "Is this the future? Who knows?" It's something. Um, it's something to Google. 
It is, absolutely. But I would say on, on what is really important is invest in the equipment. There are, you know, there are a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, but I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get Source Connect because it's, you know, $900 or 500 pounds or whatever the exchange rate is. But you know what? Investing 500 pounds in that I, I did that and I had two clients and they paid for it. So now I've got the software and it's here. Should someone say we can only connect with Source Connect? I say that's fine. I've got Source Connect. So, you know, I do read of people saying, oh, well, I don't, I've, got a, I've got a fairly good mic and I want to get a better one. Get a better one because, you know, if, if the one that you're using at the moment isn't good enough, the work will drop off and people will notice it. You can, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you have to buy an expensive mic to do a good job. There are some fantastic quality um, budget mics, obviously. But if you feel you want to go to the next level and you want to invest in your equipment, you have to make that break. And I did it when I set up, I decided to get, you know, top quality equipment. And my reason for that was, if anyone said there was a problem with my work, I could never blame my equipment. Mm -hmm. I could never turn around and say, oh, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a cheap <laughs> mic. You know, I've yeah. got a Neumann U87. And so I can never blame my mic. I can never blame my equipment. It also Investment. sends, I think, a message to your clients and prospective clients that you're serious about what you do. Absolutely. It's a, it's a marketing message as well. Now, Guy, you've hit on some really great stuff here. Just to kind of recap, uh, and number one was just the, the way you treat your clients. You being kind, yeah. being nice, being pleasant, developing relationships because, you know, jobs turn into clients, which turns, you know, turn into careers. Um, also, you mentioned social media, you know, being very uh, present, be it through YouTube, uh, SoundCloud and other forms of social media. I know you do a lot of grassroots marketing as well, you know, getting in touch with new prospective clients, keeping your equipment up to date. It sounds like you're a guy who really believes in constant improvement and always moving forward. Any other things that you want to throw in there that we've missed? I think I think you've covered it all there. Absolutely. It's like any business. A business has to evolve. You can't just sit there and say, well, well I did, you know, 10 jobs yesterday. I'm sure 10 will come in today. You can never you can never underestimate the power of just, you know, a bit of extra marketing, another phone call, a follow up email from something you sent, you know, the week before. You know, did anything come of that? Can I get any feedback from something that uh, that I sent last week? Um, no, I think what you just as you recalled them back to me i think yeah well that's what i'm doing on a daily basis and at the moment it seems to be seems to be working it sure i does. think honestly i think bill honestly i think when people say oh i'm starting out to be a voiceover it's like great you're a male voice you're the same age that's fine there's plenty of work to go around we've just you know you've just got to get out there and find it i think 10 15 20 years ago there were less people doing it the, the work was probably coming a lot thicker and faster we've all entered into it at a time now where you have to work harder you can't yeah. just think the phone will ring today i will get an email you've got to go after the work like any business that is sage and wise advice. And Guy, uh, again, <laughs> not only an amazing talent, but just uh, the, the level of which you've elevated your game, you know, your business and the number of projects you're doing, just absolutely mind-boggling and inspirational. So uh, I just want to say congratulations and certainly appreciate your time and sharing your expertise, uh, you know, with those who are really trying to develop a career in voiceovers. Uh, it's been a pleasure and I'm always open to people sort of emailing me and people do. I get emails from people all over asking for little tips or suggestions well, or uh, advice. Well, I, did, I did not mention your, your URL, which is voiceoverguy.co.uk. That's the one. Um, which yep. I'll make sure shows up here on the YouTube. You know, you can, you'll be able to see, see that there. And how can people contact you if they like to do that? They can just email me at guy at voiceoverguy.co.uk. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, really Excellent. easy. Well, Guy, wish you continued success. Uh, really all the best, and it's uh, nice to have made a new friend. And uh, hopefully I'll make it across the pond one of these days and we'll be, we'll be able to sit down and chat in person. You know what? We'd love to have you over here. We have an event called Vox. It's every year here in the UK, and I know that they would, be, they would welcome you with open arms to come and get a, a, a perspective from the USA. It would be great. Welcome. We can make that happen. We'd love to have you here, Bill. Well, thanks, Guy. I appreciate it. I'll look forward to that. And in the meantime, again, hey, all the best to you, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thanks very much indeed, Bill. Nice talking to you. Take care.